say again, it's good to be back this morning. It's already been mentioned. Jason is proud. Thank you for the rain. Glad the Lord knows just what we need when we need it. Always on time. He's uh, never been late. I've been late some of my life. A lot of times in my life. He's never been late. Always been right on time. <laughs> we may think he's late. We may think he's not working fast enough. Doing what we think ought to be done quick enough. But he's always on time. Amen. Thank you for that. He's in control this morning. Anybody got anything you want to say? Everybody's going to be quiet, apparently. You might wish you'd talk when you get done. <laughs> Struggling this morning, as usual, but thankful to be here. Thankful I'm able to be here. As, uh, you know, it's awful easy to complain and, and dread and worry about stuff, but just be thankful you're alive this morning. They will be here. Amen. Could be a lot different. Could be a whole lot different. Nobody's got anything. Brother Keith, would you pray for me, please? Our dear Heavenly Father, as we bow around our head here this morning, we'd like to just give you thanks for allowing us to be here this morning. Give us the health and the strength that we need to be able to come to your house to do all this. Just for keeping the doors open for us, Father. We're just so thankful for that because this is the many church doors that are closed today. Things has come in, tore the churches apart, and shut the doors down. We no longer stand for you, dear Lord. We pray that we might always stand for you. We pray that we might always be a, a church that you could look down at and be pleased with, dear Lord. We pray that we might always do that that you'd have us to do. We let you lead us in everything that we do. We just do everything for you. Your glory, dear Lord. Father, so we'd like to pray this morning for these objects of prayer that we heard mentioned here. We know that you can take care of each and every one of them. And we're thankful for that power that you have, Father. And dear Lord, we'd like to pray for Brother Jim as he stands this morning to teach the class. We pray that you be with him. <coughs> Open up your word to him and give him the words that you have him to say this morning. Then we pray that we'll be mindful of what he says. They can use it to apply in our lives that it might be a better and strong Christian. And then the Lord would pray that you do with Brother Daniel C. standing this morning. We pray that you just give him the liberty to be able to stand and preach your word and the spirit of the truth. And just do that that you'd have him to do this morning. And Father, we just like to give you thanks for the service last night. It was really a precious service to us. And we're just so thankful for that. And we pray that you would do it. Brother Ken, this is recording throughout your lives. Help him, Father, that he be able to stand for you and preach your word throughout the years, dear Lord, because we know that this world needs it. And we'd like to pray for this world this morning, dear Lord. We see so many out there that are lost, without you, that need you in their lives. We pray that we could be an influence on them. We pray that we could say and do something in some way that would help them that might lead them to you, make them realize that they're lost, make them realize that you're the only hope that they have, dear Lord. Now we pray that you stay with us through the remainder of this service. Lead us as we go out here in the world. And we can pray this on our Lord for the Lord. Thank you, Brother Keith. We get it. Thank you, Brother Keith. Back into Matthew, starting chapter 24. Got a lot of, a lot of scripture this week. And, uh, why in it that uh, somebody a lot better than me should be trying to bring out. It uh, seems like the more I study, the more I realize, the less I know. So I do know one thing. He's still in control. He's going to come on time. And he is coming. The good news is he's coming soon. And the bad news is he's coming soon. Yeah. Well, what, do you, what do you mean? Well, if you're saved and ready to meet him, it's good news. If you're not saved and not ready to meet him, it's bad news. It's it's real. It's not some story made up. It's not some fairy tale that's not going to take place. This is real. It's going to take place. He's coming. Amen. And when he comes, it'll be too late. And it should, you know, it's awful easy to get bogged down and trying to study and figure it all out like it ought to be. And we'll never do 
it. We're not capable. We'll get part of it, pieces of it, but we're not <coughs> intelligent enough to figure it all out. God knows all about it. He knows when he's going to come and when he's going to do what. But it should stir us up and behoove us to tell the world to come. He's coming soon. You say, well, I've heard it all my life, so have I. But we're one day further than we were yesterday. And tomorrow, if we live, we'll be one day closer to tomorrow. Right. I don't know how long it will be. I have no idea. We study on over here, even the angels don't know. Jesus himself don't know. God's the only one that knows when that day's going to be. Could be today. Could be before we leave. It's that serious. We don't, most of the time in my life, I don't take it that serious. I'll just be honest. You know, we go about our day and we do what we do and we come home and go to bed and get up and do it again. It's awful easy not to think about it. I mean, we see it all around us. We see the signs everywhere we look. Things going on now that we never dreamed would happen in our world. Just another, just another assurance. Just another, you can put more confidence in what he said because it's coming to pass in front of our eyes. You see it happening. He's coming. He's coming real soon. We have a lot of work to do. There's a lot of people that need him. It's sort of being read over there. He told them to go to the uttermost parts of the world and tell them. And you know, I, it, as you read that, it just struck me how much am I telling? You say, well, I can't go to the uttermost parts of the world. Well, you can go to work every day. You can go in your neighborhood every day. You can go to the store. You can go to the grocery store. <laughs> you can go to the country store, whatever. Tell somebody, whoever you meet. It's, uh, you know, the world's so messed up now, like we're afraid to say anything about anything. The world's gone crazy. People are nuts. I mean, lost their minds if they ever had one. It's just unbelievable what people believe now and, and, and how they're just hook, line, and sinker for such things that we see going on today. It's just unbelievable. But it should just be assurance. Well, he said these things come to pass. He said it's going to happen. It's happening. So he's soon coming. Don't know when. Wouldn't even start to say when. Don't know. No idea. Nobody does. He is coming. And, and, and the question, and hopefully, you know, my thought out of the lesson is, are you ready for him to come? I mean, there's a whole lot of information in here. We need to read and study about it. Learn it the best we can. But the key to it is, he's coming, are you ready? I thought about the little game you used to play with your kids. Ready or not, here I come. And that's the way it's going to be. Ready or not, one of these days, Coming. He's going to step out on that cloud, and if you're not ready, you're going to be left. And that's a sad, sad day. But it's a very happy day if you're ready. We already get excited about it. Maybe number one, I'm guilty. Worst one here, I'm sure, of not being excited about it. It's easy to look at all that's going on in the world today and get just all bent out of shape over it. Get down and out about it. Just be honest, it is. If you look at the news and you listen to that, you'd be depressed in a few minutes. But we ought to look at the news and listen to the news and be happy. Knowing that this stuff's coming to pass. All these things he told them is happening. <clears throat> so that means it's soon for his coming. And we'll get out of here, leave all this stuff behind. Be a wonderful time. But you know, it's awful easy to get all gathered up in it, not thinking about that part. And on the other side of that, we if if we get to the point where we're happy about him coming, we're excited about it. It's one of the verses there says you purify yourself, you know, looking for his coming. If we get to where we need to be about that, we'd be glad to tell somebody else. We'd be excited about telling, hey, guess what? Jesus is coming. He's going to fix this mess. He's going to take care of this mess. But yet we hang our head and, and just mope around a lot of the time and don't even mention it. Tell somebody how bad good he is. Yeah, it's bad. The world's bad shape. It's going to get worse. What he told us. 
It's going to wax worse and worse. Guess what? He ain't never changed. He's as good as he's ever been. He's got as much power as he's ever had. And we're living in one of the most exciting times ever. Just before he comes. Could we could we could be here when he comes. May not be, but we could be. That's exciting. Not to have to die. Just leave here. Wouldn't that be great? It's it's something that we need to get excited about. Need to be talking about. Because it's coming soon. And now I'll let you think not as we get on over here in some of the scripture. But uh, the focus of the of the lesson is the first 14 verses and I've been all over the place as to what to read. I guess we'll read those and then see what from there. But verse 1 says, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Jesus said to them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of the coming and the end of the world? Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, and see that, see that ye be not troubled. I never really noticed that part of that verse before, I don't think. He says there are wars and rumors of wars. We've been dealing with that for many years. That's been going on, so that's already took place and taken place. He says, see that you not be troubled. A lot of troubled people in the world today, including us that are faith a lot of times, get troubled about what's going on. See that you be not troubled. Don't worry about it. I'm in control. I'm going to be on time. I'm not going to leave you hanging. He's not going to renege on his promise, back up on his promises. He's going to keep them. We break promises to people. Not meaning to sometimes, maybe, but you hang around me long enough, I'll disappoint you. For sure, it won't take long. But he won't. He'll never fail you. Never leave you, never forsake you. Won't leave you hanging. He's going to do just what he says. It's hard to find somebody today to do what they say. Very hard. People will tell you anything and then not follow through and do it. And it's sad. They've not been taught any better most of the time. But he'll do what he said. He's going to come through. You, you can count on it. So be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. In other words, you see these things coming to pass. We troubled about them. Get excited about them. I'm coming. I'm coming to get you. Because you're one of mine. I'm coming after you. And on the other hand, we should be troubled about those that don't know it, those that aren't ready, and be warning them and telling them that he's coming. But, you know, it's, it's awful hard to convince someone when we're not convinced ourselves. When we're not thrilled about it and excited about it as we ought to be, real hard to convince somebody that don't know any better, that don't know about it, that they need to be saved. Uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it's it's awful easy to point fingers at somebody else, but we need to look at ourselves, examine ourselves, that we're, we're where we need to be and doing what we need to do. For nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes and diverse places. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. Just getting started. We ain't seen nothing yet. When you study about the tribulation period and how it's going to be, we ain't, we ain't seen nothing. It's going to be a bad day. It's going to be a bad time. And we should be sounding out the warning that it's coming. And we're awful bad to be quiet. There's a lot of opposition now. People are argue about anything and you know just go crazy about nothing it's awful easy to clamp down and not say anything but it's time we stood up and told the truth lived in front of the world like we should you know we're excited he's coming we're one of his he's coming to get us don't mind what goes on in the world around us 
If it's falling down all around us, then believe it is. He's got it. We're in good shape with him. You can count on it. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and hate one another, and well, we see that going on in the world today. Amen. I mean, just people, there ain't much people loving on one another and hating on each other about everything, anything. And uh, we just need to show them some love. That, that's what draws them into repentance. The love of God. When they get a picture of how much He loved them and what He did for them, that's when they get saved. And it's our job and our duty to paint that picture for them. Show them how good it is. Show them that yes, it's bad. Yes, the world is off place. Yes, there's a lot of bad things going on. There's a God in heaven that sent his son to die in your place. To give you something that you couldn't get any other way. Your place in heaven one day. Not because we're any good, because we're none good, no not one. But he made a way that we can miss all this tribulation, all this that we're talking about. He made a way that we can escape it. I'm not as safe as I ought to be, for sure. We have a lot to thank him for, a lot to praise him for, a lot to be excited about, a lot to be happy about. Um, there's uh, the world to drag you down. If you look at it, study on it, dwell on it. It, uh, this is what we need to study and dwell on. His goodness, what he's done, is doing. And he says, many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that, it, that it shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, for a witness in all the nations. Then shall come the end. Everybody will have a chance. He'll give everybody a chance to be saved at some point in time. He wouldn't be just if he didn't. Thankful for that. That's why we send our money, send our prayers to missionaries all around the world so that word can be spread around the world. And uh, where you got a small little part in that, that's wonderful. Isn't it amazing how he works things out? Isn't it amazing how he gets the, the work done? You know, you just, things happen, you don't even notice what's going on, and he takes care of things, and a lot of times we never even notice him. Don't even stop to say thank you. It's awful easy to get caught up in the world and myself, but uh, I'm glad he takes care of things. In spite of me, he, I don't deserve any of it. I'm not worthy of any of it. But he takes care of me every day. I've never been hungry. Uh, I've said I'm starving to death a lot, but I've never been hungry, really hungry, my whole life. I'm 52 years old, but I've never missed a meal hardly. Not that it was by choice if I did, or I was sick. That, you know, that, yeah, that seems trivial. I mean, you, you think I'm silly. He's fed me every single day for 52 years. Yeah. Every day, he's not missed one. Yeah. Not one. Hey. He's let me stand up on my two feet every day. Some days not quite as good as other every day. You say, well, that's, that's silly. Maybe, but it's a blessing to me. It's, 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 it's great when you think about it. And, and then that's just, that's just a small portion of what he does. But we never stop to think about it a lot of times. Be good if we get a hold of that he's done so much for us. Yes, the world's hard. Yes, times are tough. Yes, they're going to get tougher. But he's going to take care of them. No matter what. No matter what. It don't matter what comes your way. It, it makes no difference whatsoever. He's in control. He'll take care of them. God help us that we get to the place where we realize that every day in our life. What a difference it would make. You know, if I got up every morning thinking about 
He helped me get up this morning. He woke me up today. He fed me this morning. He gave me a job to go to. He's watched out over my family, saved them. The list goes on and on and on. And if, if I would get that on my mind every morning, my day would be a lot different. Man. I'd be more likely to tell somebody about it. But that's what's on my mind. We're off the bat to say whatever's on my mind, what, what we've been thinking about, what we've been studying about, what we've been watching on the news, whatever. It's what comes out of our mouth most of the time. It'd be good if we'd study on those good things. They're, uh, and they're too many to number. You'll never think of them all. You'll never be able to name them all. You start counting your blessings. You start looking at what God's done for you. You'll never get to the end. And you, you, you'll never thank Him enough. But Ben said this morning that it's impossible. It'd be good if we try that, wouldn't it? It'd be good if we try with our hand. Thank you, Lord. We have a lot to thank Him for. There's a lot of bad stuff going on in the world today. Again, we said it's going to get worse and worse, and it's going to. But that don't mean he can't become sweeter and sweeter to us. Man. You know, it, it, it should be an exciting time. Like I said, he's, he's soon coming. And you get over here into the, the latter part of this chapter, and he says, verse 36, But of that day and hour know no man, know not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Again, he's the only one that knows when the day's going to be, when he's coming. One day he'll say, son, go get you, go get your bride. And that's how it'll be, just that quick. Yeah. Twenty thunder of my says, it's pretty fast. I don't give you any time to pack your bag. I don't give you any time to get saved at the last minute. I don't give you any time to go back and say, I'm sorry to somebody. It's that quick. You're either there or not. It's that simple. It's, it's that it's that serious. It's like that. You're here one second, you're gone the next. And if you're ready, happy day. If you're not ready, very sad day. Awful day. And it, it's that simple. You know, we make it complicated. We try to put all this other stuff into it. A lot of people feel like you have to work so much to get there and all these things. When that moment comes, either by death or when he comes back, the only thing that matters is whether you accept him or not, whether you're saved or not. Nothing else makes any difference. Nothing else matters. It doesn't matter how many things you have, how much money you have, how many possessions you have, how many degrees you have on the wall. Or the list goes on and on. It, He's not going to stop and ask how much money you got in the bank. If you got this amount, you can come. If you don't, you can't. Thank the Lord, that's not the truth. Thank you. All that's going to matter is the blood's been applied. When you pass through the need you, that's all that's saving you. That blood on the doorpost. And that's all that's going to save us. That blood's been applied. That blood wouldn't have done them any good. If they left it sitting in the pot in the house, it had to be took out there and applied to the doorpost. It's there. It's available to whoever will. It's whoever will. It's there. It just has to be applied. It's not applied. It's not going to matter. When that death angel passed by, he didn't go in the house to see if they had the blood in there. He was told to look for it on the doorpost. If it wasn't there, Somebody died. Yes. And that's the way it is. That is that's how simple it is. If the blood's not been applied, you're not going. Yeah. It's that simple. And it's that easy. It's that easy. You know, and it, I'm glad he made it easy. I'm not very smart. I'm glad he made it simple because I'm not very smart. But uh, it uh, I don't know, I'm all over the place this morning, but it, it's uh, it's just a serious matter. He, he's coming soon. 
I mean, and you you look at these parables in the, in the next chapter talking about the ten virgins, five lies, five foolish. They all had lamps. They all had the opportunity to be ready. All had the same opportunity. Everybody that's ever been born on earth and ever will be on earth has the same opportunity. They can accept it or reject it. They, all the tools were there. They had the lamp. They had the wicks. But the foolish didn't have the oil. Didn't have the Holy Spirit. They weren't saved. Weren't ready. They pretended to be ready. They, they tried to put on a pretty face and act like they were ready. They had all the tools. Had everything there. But no Holy Spirit on the inside. Weren't saved. So it's it's that serious. And he came and they tried to run out and buy oil, tried to get oil from the other five. Wouldn't work. Too late. After he comes, too late. When he comes back, it's too late. So should behoove us to be ready now. Make sure. Ready now. Make sure your neighbor's ready now. Make sure your family's ready now. Tell them about it. Beg them, play with them, whatever you gotta do. Show them the way we live. You know, I think that's the key with all people watch how we live. They see our excitement level, our enthusiasm, which mine's lacking, I'm the first to say that. But, you know, we should be excited about the time we're in. <laughs> And you look at it and say, that's crazy. This is the awful, most powerful time I've ever seen. And it is in my life. It's just pretty bad. But he's coming. I'm ready to go. Happy day. Come on. Come now. It'll be great. But there's some that aren't ready. We need to tell them. We need to warn them. And we need to show them our excitement that he's coming. That we're ready to hear him. And no matter what goes on in the world, he's going to take care of us. And uh, he's going to do what he said. Gonna feel, he's going to fulfill every promise he ever made. Every single one. And there's a bunch of them in here. A bunch of them. We can never, we can never study them all out. No way. He's going to fulfill every one. Perfect. To the T. Not miss a thing. And uh, he's good like that. Uh, we had a situation in our family, a little just an everyday matter that we prayed about and encouraged Seth to pray about. And he, he did. He answered that last night. It was a waste. It really helped our family. It helped him a lot. Seeing God, you know, he... He prayed about the thing that a lot of people might be going and think about praying about. Made the decision. God showed him it was the right one. Clearly showed him it was the right one. God bless him. He didn't have to do that. You know, he, he didn't have to show that to him. He did. And I'm thankful for that. There's just those things he does for us day after day. It's just amazing. He said, said last night he made a call. He said, that's just amazing. I don't know why it should be. Shouldn't amaze me at all. Shouldn't surprise me. But it is. It's amazing that he that he cares that much about us. And that's that's where it's at. It's his love for us. That's why he does all these things. Why it's so good. That uh, regardless of how sorry no damn we are, he still loves us anyway. He knew how I turned out. He knew how I felt. But he said, Son, in you. Died in my place. Let me hear about it. Sent the Holy Ghost to commit me about it. He's quiet at all. I didn't have nothing. Didn't have nothing to offer. Nothing but a sorry, no good to somebody. But he paid the price that I could be saved in heaven one day. Not have to worry about when he comes. Not have to worry about if it's today or not. Or five minutes from now or not. 
and that's that's a blessing. I'm saying this morning, I'm thank you. Go away by, and I'm thanking him. It's uh, again, you know, we hear it all the time. We, you know, it's, it's a bad day, and you know, this and that, and it's, it's all bad news. Hey, there's plenty of good news. How about let's talk about the good news? There's plenty of bad news to go around. You look at the news in about five minutes, and you see there's plenty of bad news. But we've got good news to run us. This precious word. He saved us. Made put us on the way to heaven. Made a way that we could be one of his. Enjoy the blessing that he has for us down here. The little things he does for us every day. The list goes on and on. We have a lot to be thankful for. A lot to be happy about. A lot to tell the world about. The world's hungry for it. People are hungry for some good news. If you, you just hear bad all the time, it just drags you down. Amen. We need somebody to say, hey, Jesus still saves. He's still on the throne. He still loves you. He still sent his son to die in your place. And one day he's coming. Could be today. Could be tomorrow. Might be next week. We none know. But I'm glad he's, he's going to do what he said. You know, it's easy to look and say, well, you know, I've heard that all my life. And if you have, thank the Lord that you have. Amen. That's a blessing if you've heard it all your life. That means you've been in preaching. And uh, I mean, somebody's been telling you the truth. But you, it's easy to try to model him up in the of time. And you can't do that. God's time is nowhere near our time. Uh, thousands of years is like a day to him. And we don't know his time timetable. But he'll be on time. Don't worry. Don't fret. He'll be here. He's coming. You can count on it. You can take it to the bank. It's going to happen. He's showed us and told us in his word. We've seen all of these things leading up to it fulfilled. Nothing holding him back from coming. Just God saying the word. Go get them. It's going to take place. And it's, uh, it should excite us. It should get us, you know, excited about him coming. Excited about telling the lost world he's coming. Hey, there's some good news. It is good news. And it, what good is it? What good is this great news if we don't share it? There's all this bad news and we hear it all the time and it's in front of us all the time. And we know the good news. We know how the book ends. We've read the last chapter. We know some of what's going to happen. Of course, we don't know it all. And we know the good news. Why don't we tell it? Because I'm sorry I'm down. That's why I don't tell it. Afraid what somebody might think. Afraid somebody, what somebody might say. What difference does he make? What, what's it going to hurt? Our pride, our feelings. Well, what does it matter? You say, you're on your way to heaven. What's a little bit of hurt feelings going to hurt? You know, it, it's... We, we let so little thing hinder us from doing such great things. And uh, it's... Uh, it's good news. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Couldn't be today. Happy day. It is. If you're ready. Bad news if you're not. And that's, that's what I got this morning. I hope we didn't really get into any of the lessons, I don't think. But I hope you got something to help you. And that, I think, you know, that's the thought that the lesson was. If you come, be ready. Have your lamp trim. Have plenty of oil in it. Be working. Be busy. You know, it's, it'd be good if he found us telling the world about him. It'd be good if he came back and found us praising him, thanking him for all he's done, telling the world about it. It's, uh, a lot of time I'd be sad for him to come if I'm doing what I'm doing, or do not do what I'm supposed to do. It'd be good if he could find us just telling everybody we see. 
Jesus is coming. I'm telling you, he's coming. I'm telling you, he's coming. Could be today. I remember she was Grandpa Arnold. Before he died, he talked about it all the time. I believe Lord's coming this year. Or in the next few years, whatever he'd say. He said, could be today. I hope it's today. It wasn't too long. He fell over with a heart attack and left here. He believed it. He seen it come to pass. The Lord come and got him. He's going to come get the rest of us. It's a wonderful thing. Great thing. I'm going to get excited about it. Pray for me that I would. More. Good news. We need some good news. And we got it. It's not because we don't have it. It's just because we're not telling it. There's, there's good news in the world that the news can tell. There's good things happening in the world that they can tell. They don't tell it. They tell the bad. Bad news are here. We got good news. We just tell it. People listen. You, you know, they'll listen. They may not hear it. It may not sink in at that time, but we still need to tell it. Anybody got anything? If not, we appreciate your prayers. Let's pray for Brother Daniel this morning.